15 years, this windswept valley has been the home of the Rainbow Tribe. A community of over 50 families, they own 100 acres of the valley. Living close to the land, there's no electricity, water is from a well, and the loo is in the hedgerows. This has to be the ultimate green way of life. Outsiders would have to work hard just to stay alive. But in TP Valley, everyone is here out of choice. Steve Mills came to the valley 11 years ago. His daughter Jessie was born here and lives with Steve in their teepee. His son Van is now 16 and has had his own teepee for the last three years. The valley is sort of mostly people who came here in the 60s, sort of late 70s, sort of families who wanted to get away from the city and started up a community with gardens and sort of trying to be a bit self-sufficient, trying to do something different. I was uh, a bricklayer in London. I used to lay bricks and price work and uh, I was watching television one night and uh, I seen the valley on Blue Peter and some people from the valley were putting up a teepee on Blue Peter with Valerie Singleton and I thought that looks like a really nice thing and I got the address and I visited but I went back to London and I stayed there for maybe another couple of years and then I decided one day that I was coming here and I loaded up my car, I had a bell tent and uh, the car, I took the car to the garage and I said to the guy, I'm going to Wales, can you just fix it up a bit? And he says it won't make it to the end of the street, <laughs> but uh, it was an old Ford car, but it got us here. I was here six months before I started building a lodge and I built a set of poles first. And I, I put these poles up and I used to sit inside these poles, these bare poles, and I had my bell tent. And I'd be sitting there shouting to everybody, go and see my poles, like, here's my set of poles. And everybody saying, this guy's crazy, like. I think Steve's really sort of great. Taught me how to do it, brought me here when I was younger. Gave me a chance that I wouldn't have had in the city. I think I'm very different from Steve. He's sort of like, you know, the average hippie, I suppose you'd call him. Oh, he's just totally mad and eccentric. Van's got his own personality, he's got his own ways, you know, he's got his own ideas. If we had lived, for instance, in a sort of like, you know, a council estate and he was in a house with me, he might have got my views very strong. But he has lived amongst maybe 50 families, 60 families, and he goes round, he gets different opinions. My relationship with my parents is very good. Get on well, no arguments. Actually, that's, that's a lie. I've had one, but that was recently. It's just because I'm getting older and I just like to question what he says sometimes. I can only compare it with my childhood in a house with my mother. And uh, I think it's a better start in life for them. You know, it's a much better start. They've got their own responsibilities, you know. Like they have to do their own washing, you know, wash their own clothes. They have to get their own wood. It's just independence. It makes them. It makes them better kids. I wanted to make a teepee in Steve's lap. My dad said, um, uh, well, I'm not going to make it for you. You're going to have to make it, but I'll sort of show you how to do it. I managed it in time. So quite difficult. Moving out from home, having my own space, starting on my own. It's good. Most of the kids do it here. Get their own teepees, make them, whatever. I think it gives them a strength, you know, it gives them a certain strength. When they've got their own place, you know, they've got their own lifestyle. They don't have to be, you know, like, tripping over you all the time. They get their own pride. Jessie tells me, I mean, she tells me that she wants a little lodge. She wants me to build her one this summer, but she wants it not to actually live in it. She wants to sort of have it next to us as a sort of like, you know, and she wants to keep it together during the day. So I think it'll be a gradual move for Jessie. She's still 11. The boys didn't go out till they were 13. No, I like living with Stephen. I wouldn't like to move out until I'm older. This, this place is definitely not the nuclear family. There are family groups within it, but people are coming and going all the time. Hey, girls. Hey. Start waking up, yeah? <laughs> hey. Kids come and stay here, and my kids go and stay in other lodges, and we eat together communally, you know, we sweat together. We do lots of things together. To 
maintain a TP and keep the elements out and keep it dry and, you know, keep it comfortable, get wood. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's like anything else. When you've done it for 10 years, it becomes very easy. People come here struggling, you know, new people, and you see them, they really struggle, they struggle, and they make everything seem really hard, but the people that have been here are just, you just do it. All right, then, Van. You get sort of boys coming down from the city and they just don't have a clue. But, you know, just come in, don't know what to do or anything. Can't go and get wood, always get the wrong wood, and they soon learn. Everybody has to learn, don't they? I could probably survive a lot better, sort of do all my own cooking and run my own place. Most of them are still living with their mothers and having it all done for them. Used to be a lot of girls here, but then they all sort of left. And their parents moved. They just seem to want to get out and get a career together. As most of them go out, want to, want to go to school, want to live in a house, they want all the mod cons and whatnot. I haven't got any GCSEs or anything. That I don't want a career, really, as such, like that anyway. All the parents teach their own children. It's OK. We've had the school inspectors down and whatnot. Seem to think it's OK the way we do it. I think it's very uh, limiting for kids at school. I think they could learn ten times more here. And, and, and they're, they're clever, the kids are very clever. When they're out in this space, they're not breathing lead fumes all day, you know. They got, you know, they've got fresh air, they've got fresh water, they're healthy. And they learn. It was great when I first came, it was like a whole adventure playground. I just didn't know where to start. Good place to grow up. We've got our own swimming pool, we built it about two years ago. It was like a little gully with a swamp, so we dug out all the boggy bit, built a big bank. Keep on draining it, clean it out, it's really good. It's not very big, but it's big enough for all the little ones to learn how to swim. Go in it in the middle of winter sometimes, just for a laugh. My most prized possession in this TP is, I'd say, this drum. It's like a friend. It's got a heartbeat. Oh, they're just from all over the world. There's chants. Some of them are uh, Sufi chants, North American Indian chants. They're just chants from other cultures, other, you know, that have still got their chants. When I was living in the city, I, I'd never had any musical talent, you know, I never, I would never sing, you know, I would never dare to sing. And uh, then I came to the first sweat lodge and everybody was chanting. And I gradually learned these chants and I started banging the drum. And uh, I just got into singing and chanting. I found it was a great joy, a great release, you know. I used to get sort of depressed in London. I used to get empty feeling. I've never had that feeling since the day I come here. I left it behind in London. We will always live like this. I may not always live in a teepee, but I will live, you know, I will live like this. I see myself staying here, sort of living my life for a good few more years at least. I mean, normal people just live in a different lifestyle. I mean, we're not sort of mad savages or anything. We don't sacrifice babies or any of that nonsense. I think if people were to live near the earth and touch the earth and live near the earth, they wouldn't be normal, but they'd be very sane. They'd become very sane. They would realize that this, you know, they were floating about space on, on, a, on a ball, you know, they were actually on a planet. It's good for you, yeah, I think it would benefit a lot of people. Fascinating. That was the Rainbow Tribe. Now, if you'd like to know more about the items we've covered in today's programme, then do write in, sending a stamped addressed envelope to Living Now, Home Life Fact Sheet 9463, BSB, PO Box 350, Leeds LS99 2BS. That's it from us for today. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>